when we get to the place of unconditional love, it means that you don't always have to be satisfying all my wishes, wants, and preferences for me to love you. There's something called compassion and empathy and desire to serve each other. But you can't go too far that way. If you're if you're a woman, their tendency is to, when you're not getting enough, is to give more with the thought that if I give more, he'll give more back. But yeah. it's the opposite. It, if you give more to a man to get more, you get less. And that's hard for women to get because I'm a man. And if I give you more because I want to get more, you'll give me more. <laughs> Women, women have a built in sense of reciprocity, which is when someone gives to them, they immediately want to give back and actually giving back creates more positive hormones in in a certain circumstance than receiving. So there's an old saying, giving is better than receiving, but giving is only better than receiving if you also have received. Okay, so you have to feel like I can give, but I have to have something to give. If I give out of debt, it doesn't feel good to be in debt. And I've actually figured this out in terms of the hormones. Men's hormones are just primarily testosterone, which is we give to get. If I get, and what I want, I go to work, I want to get paid. If I give to my wife, I want to get paid by appreciation and responsiveness and happiness and joy. That's why we say, you know, a man's greatest desire is for a woman to be happy. But then why don't men do the right things to make her happy? Because he doesn't know. It's always he doesn't know. And how's he going to know? Can you tell him? Not so easy because it sounds like complaining, but you can. You can learn how to train him. And that's what we're all about is, is training him by asking him for his help and for his support. And for many women, we were talking before about women on their independent, strong side, their estrogen levels are so low, they don't even know why they need a man. And they don't value what they need a man as being that important because what you need from a man is more important as your estrogen levels continue to rise. So what does it look like you need from a man? You need a man, if you can make all the money you wanna make, but you need companionship, you need friendly. You need to feel safe that you can share whatever you think and feel. And some women don't know that that's what they need. You need to feel safe that you can be naked intellectually with somebody, you can be naked emotionally with someone, then you can be naked physically with someone and experience the potential of spiritual union, which is a beautiful, crazy state, which couples, who have good communication get to experience. It's just like heavenly and everybody gets a glimpse of it. Uh, If you've never had a glimpse of it, I'll just throw this in. (laughs) Maybe it's politically incorrect, but it's becoming more legal in some states, which is psilocybin, Uh, the mushrooms. The more and more therapists are using psilocybin uh, because it will give you a state of awe. And you realize that you really have been living in a a non-love state. Now, some people experience that just going on vacation. Some people experience that by taking time to be in nature. Some women will experience that in a yoga class because a yoga class, for example, they're doing nice, nice stretches in the body, but you're around other women. That's a tribal feeling. And they're playing nice, soft music. Nobody's having an argument. Nobody's competing with anybody. You're just doing your thing. And there's a leader, someone you're depending upon to guide you. And it's, you know, it's all very feminine in that way. And this is very funny because, you know, I started doing yoga at three years old. My dad taught me. And then I went off to India, become a master of yoga and all that. And uh, the way we do it in India, where it was taught where that yoga comes from is for men. And you do it alone. You don't do it with other people. <laughs> and yes. You don't do it to beautiful music. You know, <laughs> you do it alone and in silence. But you see now women are more on their male side. So there's certain aspects of yoga that supports the male side, which is challenging your muscles, holding poses and so forth. But you're doing it with other women. You're doing it with a leader guiding you. And that is whenever you're following the leader, your estrogen levels get produced. Doesn't mean you follow the leader down the wrong path, but you find someone who can guide you. Dancing with a man, uh, an old fashioned traditional dancing. You see, it was invented because it's a place where women feel I can trust him to make all the right moves because we've taken the class together. Today, everybody's doing, they're doing their own thing when they're dance. This is very testosterone producing. 
and there's a place for it, you know, but then there's a place for having set steps where he knows what to do, where she can trust that he's going to swing her this way. He's going to twirl her this way and she can go with his lead and flow with it. And that's basically allowing him to be your male side and you're on your female side and you go into that balance. Same thing as making love. You're allowing a man to do it to you. You're not giving to him. You're responding to him, always responding. You don't have to give to a man. You, a man ultimately wants to feel successful in giving to you. And because you're receiving and because you're actually in love, as you receive his own female side is being nourished and supported. So he can be both masculine and feminine at the same time. You, on the other hand, are being able to receive someone doing for you. So your own male side, you're appreciating him doing for you. You're actually appreciating your own male side. I mean, this is a, you're, you're inviting it in. You're saying you're a part of me. You're embracing that part of you. So you don't have to go out to your male side to feel the joy of your power. See, that's the power. You can be in your feminine side and also feel power. And then you come out and you go over to your male side, you go over your female side. But we need this place where we can be our male and female side at once. Now, it's not the only place to do it. Like right now, I'm on my male, female side. Uh, I'm in the flow. When I write a book, I'm in the flow. Most of the time, I'm in the flow all the time. However, still making love, we actually have someone of the opposite sex where you're connecting with. You actually can go to a place of higher, higher hormonal balance. Now, I'm not a gay person, so I don't know if they can get to that place. So if they can, that's great. Uh, but what I do know is just like uh, heterosexuals who lose their passion happens in gay relationships as well. And I'm not an expert on that. What I do know is that when you're heterosexual and you're looking to your partner to find a part of yourself and love it, if you're on your male side and you have a woman, you can go to your female side by loving her and be on both sides at the same time. If you're in a gay relationship, that's more challenging because you're a female and you're going to another female. So you find a, a female who's more on the male side. And so you're finding it through them. But how are they finding their, their female side by being on their male side? They're, 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 what I recommend for them, because they tend to also polarize, one's on the male side, one's on the female side, more so, is consciously change roles from time to time consciously do it. Just say, you know, I'm usually the dominant one here. Let's practice me being the more, more yielding, submissive one, and you're more dominant. Because you can play games. You can, you know, you can just simply to generate those hormones. Mm -hmm.